Hi everybody, I'm Jack and this is Raw Tropical Living. Thanks for joining me today. Well, it is Saturday about noon here on the mountain, so I'm running a little bit late with this video. Um, I, just got, I just got back from the market about an hour ago and did a live on that. And um, yeah, I've got to get this video done and then I got to do another, like do work on another little clip that I was doing for another video. I just basically spaced out a whole day yesterday. <laughs> That's a little embarrassing to say, but uh, I was actually doing something. I was, um, I, when I get on a train of thought, I can get lost sometime. Um, on one of my side projects for this summer is um, I'm watching tons of videos on going to yard sales and going to thrift stores and selling through an eBay account. So I've been, I just kind of got lost in videos and at the end of the day, I kind of giggled. I was like, I don't know where the day went, but I didn't do a video, <laughs> I didn't do anything. Luckily, I was already ahead and I had yesterday video made. Anyhow, today is about right thought, compassion, and mindfulness. As you know, um, I've been talking a little bit of, I kind of had a little weekend series going on mindfulness. Um, now, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I do videos every day, um, normally on the raw food lifestyle, plant-based lifestyle, a little bit of fitness, a little bit of meditation like this on Saturday. So if, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button and click on the little bell and check send notifications so you will stay subscribed to the channel. Um, I've, I'm actually gonna read a little bit from a book today and I'll uh, talk about the little reading as I go, but I was reading about this, I was reading this, la um, this past week and it just kind of jumped out at me because the title, those are, those are things that I work on. Those are things that I work on personally is the um, right thought and the compassion. I'm working on the compassion thing. I kind of feel bad because I catch myself being a little bit conditional with my compassion at time, almost like, and that's not for me to judge, almost saying like, yeah, I don't have time for this person. I'm not great with whiners. I'm not great, I, I'm, I'm the kind of person, like I'll always reach down to help you, but there's just certain people, you know, that they just get on your no nerves and it's hard to have compassion for them. So that's always gonna be a project and that's something that I work on and right thought, of course, you know, every day. This mindfulness is, um, you know, it's just really, really kicking. This practice is just like taking me places. Um, I was thinking last night just about, you know, I have random flashbacks now. And I had a hard one this week. It was, I wanted to say a slap in the face, but it's not like that sensation. It's almost just like a wave of something. I had a flashback going back to the old days. And I just thought, I mean, that's why I'm so happy, man. Seven years ago, I just flashed back to a time. Seven years ago, I'm in a miserable living situation in a small dwelling, no space to myself. And just to cope, I was outside smoking. I would light one butt off the other. I would light, I would just smoke one Marlboro after another and just pace around going, God, I can't get out of this. I was miserable. I was depressed. I was shitty to be around, I'm sure, on a daily basis. So, man, when I broke out of that stuff, that's why, I mean, I know I get a little silly sometimes, but that shit real, you know? My happiness ain't made up at all. Like, I'm, down, I'm damn near dancing on clouds every day because of where I've been, because, you know, it just wasn't a lot of fun. Looking back, you think it was fun back then, but it wasn't. So, anyhow, let me get into the reading this morning. This is by... Joseph Goldstein, another good author um, on mindfulness. I got to see if I can get myself a refurbished um, iPad when I get to the stage. Mine has just about had it. Okay, this is the, actually chapter 40 and it's titled Right Thought, Compassion. Right thought includes all the intentions and aspirations that lead to wholesome actions, which result in the welfare and happiness of ourselves and others. These are thoughts of renunciation, free of sense desire, thoughts of goodwill and loving kindness, free of ill will, and lastly, thoughts of compassion, free of cruelty. See, that first little paragraph right there just like even resonated me on the whole vegan thing, so it's a nice little combination there. That is per, like these, these are thoughts of renunciation, free of sense desire, thoughts of goodwill and loving kindness, free of ill will, free of ill will, loving kindness towards all being, free of ill will towards all being, and lastly, thoughts of compassion, free of cruelty to all beings. The dichotomy of skillful and unskillful is, is here very clear. Cruelty wishes to cause harm to people. It is the disposition to give unnecessary pain and suffering. Cruelty is a feeling of extreme heartlessness. We see the manifest 
manifestation of this mind state in the many situations of violence throughout the world. Sometimes this quality of cruelty seems contagious, with whole populations involved in killing fields of destruction. We have seen this in Cambodia, Rwanda, Darfur, and many other places around the world. We can see the heartlessness of actions in the decimation of many native cultures, in the violence of slavery and its legacy of racism, in the targeted cruelty of homophobia, in violence against women. The range and force of this state of mind is extensive and far-reaching. Compassion is the antidote to this great destructive power. Compassion is the strong wish of the mind and heart to alleviate all suffering. It opens our hearts to the suffering that is there and it overcomes our indifference. It is the strong and deep feeling that is moved to act. As Thich Nhat Hanh so aptly put it, compassion is a verb, and it was this very feeling that motivated the Bodhisattva on his long journey to Buddhahood. In our times, the Dalai Lama is an inspiring exemplar of this ennobling mind state. He expressed the challenge for us very clearly. Compassion and love are precious things in life. They are not complicated. They are simple, but difficult to practice. It's worth investigating why such a beautiful and wholesome state is so difficult to practice. A careful examination might, even, might reveal even small and unnoticed moments of cruelty within ourselves. Awaken, awakening compassion in ourselves. Compassion arises out of our willingness to come close to suffering. That was a good, that's a good one right there. Let me read that again. Compassion arises out of our willingness to come close to suffering. Go back to that word indifference. Like that's what I struggle with at times. Not so much cruelty, but indifference. You know, just uh, um, the problem is that even though we may want to be compassionate and perhaps often are, it is not always easy to open to the suffering that is present. And just as there are many times when we don't want to acknowledge and open to our own pain, we don't necessarily want to be with the pain of others. There are strong tendencies in the mind that keep us defended, withdrawn, indifferent, or apathetic in the face of suffering. This indifference is often unacknowledged and is a great barrier to a compassionate response. As an experiment, watch your mind the next time you approach a situation of suffering. It might be some pain in the body or some emotional distress, um, like discontent, fear, unworthiness, jealousy, or loneliness. It might be an interaction with a difficult person or a situation of suffering in the world, um, situations of racial prejudice, political or religious violence, or of natural disasters. I can I, you know, I've been, and I, I didn't see her yesterday. I've been, um, I've been seeing this woman on the street. She looks indigenous. There's, there's not that many, but there, there are indigenous people in this country. It's a very small population, and there's indigenous people from other countries. Um, I can tell by the traditional dress, but she's almost just given up. Like, she sits in one spot, and she doesn't even shake a cup to ask for money like others. It's almost like her head is down. She's got a baby there with her, a small child, and, you know, she's got her things, and she just sits over there very docile. And um, I've recently, whenever I know her, I, I go and put some money in the cup. I was actually going to try to help her out um, a little bit more than just some change yesterday. And when I went downtown, I didn't see her there. So, um, yeah, those are things, like, these are things, like, I like to share the things that are really, you know, pertinent to me um, and that I'm working on. Um, let's see, where did I start off? Oh, blah, 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 blah. It might be some pain in the body, blah, blah, blah. It might be an interaction, blah, blah, blah. What happens as we face these situations, either in person or through the vivid images of the media? Do we feel uneasy? Do we withdraw? Do we numb ourselves? Do we close our eyes? Do we let it in? The question for us is, how can our hearts stay open given the magnitude of suffering that exists in the world? Is it even possible to open to it all with compassion, diminishing the subtle cruelty of indifference? The challenge is not a theoretical one. It is not enough to admire from afar the qualities of kindness and compassion as being noble ideas, but, but somewhat removed from our daily lives. It's not enough to cultivate them only in the solitude of a meditation retreat. Our practice is about the transformation of consciousness that makes compassionate responsiveness the default setting of our lives. Compassion requires both openness and equanimity. It requires learning to let things in without drowning in the difficulties and, with, and without being overcome by sorrow. It means learning to simply be with the truth of things as they are. This is the great gift of mindfulness that opens us to compassion. 
being with the truth of what is present is what we do every time we open to our own pain or difficulty. As we practice opening to and coming close to the suffering in our own lives with compassion, we then have greater strength and courage to be with the suffering of others. I'm going to read just a little bit more to you. Empathy is the beginning of compassion. Empathy happens when we take a moment to stop and feel what is really going on with another person before we rush on with our lives. I don't know if it's really empathy because I've never been in that situation, but I do, I do see the mindfulness connection. I mean, like I say, I've started, I've, I really try to, you know, I see things like this and I try to connect to it. I try to like, you know, not just throw a couple of coins, but I think about this person. Um, and I try to, you know, I try to feel that compassion. And for somebody like that, I don't have a problem at all. You know, it's just like, it, that's, it's so easy to be compassionate to somebody like that. But that's the, ch that's the challenge. That's the lesson in it all is to be compassionate to all, even the people that, that hate us. Um, blah, blah, blah. This is its own practice because many times we might be cognizant of another's pain, but we don't take the time, even a few moments, to come close to it, to really open to it. We can practice this openness in different kinds of uh, situations. When we're on retreat, we might feel the distress of the restless person sitting next to us instead of getting lost in aversion and reactivity because they are disturbing our meditation. It might be opening to the difficulties and suffering of someone we're very close to or opening to a stressful situation in the world. Or there might be situations where people really are behaving very badly, causing a great deal of harm either to themselves or others. Our usual uh, reaction is some judgment about how bad they are coupled with a righteous feeling. But it's also possible to stop and feel what is going on in a larger context of understanding. Dr. Tenzin Chodrak, who at one time was the fish, a ph physician to the Dalai Lama, was imprisoned and tortured by the Chinese authorities for more than 17 years. He described what made it possible for him to survive not only physically, but also with an open and compassionate heart. He saw that his torturers, his enemies, were human beings like himself, that his guards and tormentors were people who were also in adverse conditions, creating the unwholesome karma that would bring about their own future suffering. He never forgot the commonality of the human condition or the understanding that all actions bring consequences. And he saw the law of karma not as a vehicle of revenge, they'll get theirs, but as a vehicle of compassion. Claude Levinson, the Dalai Lama's biographer, says that Chodrick had a gaze filled with the perception of one who has seen so much um, that he has seen everything, seen beyond the suffering he has experienced, beyond all the evil and the abuses he has witnessed, yet expressing boundless compassion for his fellow human beings. Now, if someone who has been tortured for 17 years can show compassion to their torturers, I mean, come on, we've got to be able to work up a little compassion. But um, anyhow, this, like I say, these weekend things, I try to make them, um, you know, I try to make them as relevant to other people as possible. But I, but I also like to share how, where it is in my personal path. And, you know, that is stuff like, I see reading, like sometimes when I'll do a reading or do one of these videos, it's just almost like a sign. You know, everybody talks about they see numbers. I don't see numbers. Numbers are just numbers, random, dancing around like math. But um, I, do t I do take signs, and I take signs from uh, certain things that I pick up and see at certain times, like I was supposed to see that. But anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this one today. Um, and if you like it, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up. And I will see you guys again tomorrow. Have a very beautiful weekend, and know that I love you. Peace.